This is a removal and tear down of an Atomic 4 30 year old raw water cooled engine out of the ocean. Here she is down on the bilge, four cylinder flat top gas. This sailboat had pretty good access with a large um, hatchway. I took all the ancillary equipment off of it, mostly to lighten it up. That's a borrowed rig available in the harbor through friends. It's a bit overkill for a 350 pound engine, but finagling it out of there, which is why I'm standing on it to guide it, um, keeps it from bumping into things. This is done in a slip, things move around. There she is coming out. Use the boom as a uh, crane to move it onto the dock. The mast and boom of this boat capable bowl of handling 4,000 pounds or more. I'm still careful with it. Got to have friends for this operation. Not a single-handed sailor's uh, project. There's the heat exchanger, water jacket coming off. I'm sure you guys have been into this if you've had heating problems. Um, tearing it down piece by piece here. And that's a temperature control valve on the front aftermarket trying to uh, deal with the overheating. Marking everything as I went for um, timing and alignment. That's the flywheel. It's balanced. It must go on the same way as it came off. Uh, stud pullers. Most of the studs on this engine had been eaten away by the uh, water over the 30 years of life. As you can see, the uh, head and the passages all need to be cleaned up. But it's not actually pitted or damaged. It's a phenomenally robust um, alloy they use. So I'm very impressed with it. Some of the cooling passages had to be drilled out, scraping with a screwdriver, etc. Just made it look like it was shiny muck inside, but those are the um, studs that were rotted away. Those all get replaced, of course. Here's the other side of the engine where the cooling water goes into the four cylinder jackets. Uh, that had been cleaned out before um, so it's been uh, accessed. Cleaning those jackets off helped a little bit, but not much. 30 years worth of uh, gunk. Salt water cooled, adds up. That's a snap-on um, valve compressor. The guy was nice enough to bring it down to the harbor. Always plug up these uh, little holes in the valve train, whether you're taking the engine out or not. If you drop anything down there, like the valve keepers, uh, you're looking at tear down. This is the uh, transmission, bolts right on the back of the Atomic 4, shares the same engine oil. Very low maintenance, very robust um, deal. Uh, came off fairly easily. Uh, generally speaking, the engine came apart um, fairly well. I mean, a tap with a rubber mallet here and there, and she was, she was good. Um, this was all done in the cockpit of the same sailboat. So, uh, and didn't upset any of my dock buddies, but uh, it's a pretty simple engine. You see some nice oversized bearings in there. And this thing was just turning a uh, little bronze prop in the water. And it's built like it was um, for farm vehicle or industrial equipment. Uh, again, we're looking at the alignment. Um, this is the, uh, the clutch mechanism for the shifter comes out with the drift pin. You see it in place there to the left. Again, making sure you don't drop anything inside. Chances are I'd never find it again. Um, this all came off as a single unit also, so it wasn't a scary operation. The, the bands and the, um, the, the clutch plates were not worn. Um, I'm attesting to uh, how tough these motors are. This is a well, hammer persuasion on the back end to get that uh, final drive unit off. You can see the blocks underneath it. A little screwdriver to pry off the case. Uh, that's on a tooling pin, so it needs to pull backwards away from the cylinders to come off. It doesn't come up. You have to pull it backwards. And I apologize for using a screwdriver. It's, you know, it's not possible to have every tool available on a sailboat. You make do with what you got. Now we're deeper inside to the um, beautiful industrial gears. Again, showing very little wear. Um, they didn't have any chips or nicks in them. 
this is marking and making a histogram of all the alignments for the crankshaft and the, um, the drives, oil pump. Um, that's showing one of the um, dimples. Most of these are aligned with dimples on the gears. And uh, you keep meticulous track of those and you'll be all right. On the front side of the engine, um, plate comes off. Uh, I think it was like 12 bolts there. Again, I thought I'd have to fight it and it came right off. Flipping the engine upside down, so now it's sitting on its uh, flat head. Crankshaft up. Huge oil pan. That's the oil screen showing um, whatever debris is in there from the last uh, rebuild. Uh, this motor was rebuilt once before, I think. I wasn't sure. Um, those screens are still available. Don Moyer is the uh, place to look up. I hope he retired by now. He's did a lot for the Atomic Four community. But DonMoyer.com, you can get these parts still. You're looking down at the crankshaft here. Again, those mic'd out. The, the lobes were not excessively worn. The crankshaft bearing and journals were not excessively worn. Um, it's really an amazing engine. And it's designed to run a little sloppy in the first place. It's not tight tolerance like our our modern high efficiency engines. Down to the crank now. Uh, again, marking and uh, measuring as I go. Uh, the crank was in good shape. You know, it's a $450 part. I was very glad to find out that was okay. This is the uh, connecting rod bearings. Um, always replace these anyway, just like any automotive rebuild. Um, they were not excessively worn, though. I mean, if I was at sea, I could have put this thing back together after cleaning out the uh, the jackets. But the main goal of this whole thing was to uh, hot tank the block and get all those passages uh, clear again so it could be able to cool itself. Taking off the main bearings here. Got to have a torque wrench to put it back together. None of that sloppy dockside work. Come on, we're better than that. Here's our uh, business end of the drive unit of the crankshaft. Again, with the bearings and the journals. Uh, I believe the bearing set is a couple hundred bucks on these. I'm taking apart down to the, uh, the oil pump here. And looking down into, uh, into the cylinder bore with the, uh, the crank out. Those are your pistons, all four of them. Um, these get kind of pricey if you need to buy new ones. There's uh, aftermarket kits by Hastings that includes an oil scraper uh, ring, which is very nice. Um, you can Google that. Hastings has a, um, a ring kit for these. That's a good piston. I believe I got a cracked piston in here. Pretty good photograph of it. Come on. Um, these get oblong after 30 years. They're not round anymore. So uh, honing out the cylinders and replacing the pistons was necessary. Okay, big old half-inch drive uh, to get off um, the, um, the the drive gears and the camshaft here. You can see where the starter went in. The starter was a beautiful piece of work. I mean, that thing was just super industrial was easy to rebuild. Um, don't hesitate rebuilding your ancillary equipment. It's um, it's all robust stuff. Easily done. You can even have the alternator rewound to more modern specs like 65 amps. Any electrician shop will take the care of that for you. All the parts nicely laid out and detailed. Again, this is all done in the cockpit of a sailboat. Not that bad, guys. All the valve springs, you measure each one of these, and their length is directly proportional to their um, their life. You don't just stretch them back out and reuse them. That doesn't work. Uh, valve kits are available. If you're foreign, if you're abroad someplace, and you can't get these parts, I hear the Volkswagen Beetle valves are very similar and can be ground down at a good machine shop, like a good machine shop in Mexico. They are very good at that stuff. Taking part the rings, connecting rods there. And this is in our uh, oil pump. Oil pump, of course, being bathed in oil was uh, didn't show any abnormal signs of wear. Nothing I could detect. So the head cleaned up, and all those oil pass, all those cooling passages and um, um, stud holes showing. 
This is important because uh, you can find things like rotted through block, which is real bad, or you can find cooling passages that should be there, but on your engine with the gunk and the buildup, you might not even see them. So these pictures are so you know where the cooling passages are and you can go drill them out. That's the only thing that I found that went through 30 years of crusty stuff was a drill. Scraping it with a screwdriver made it look like shiny metal underneath where it was actually um, corrosion. So these is uh, miking out your uh, mechanics here, making sure that you have the right clearances if you're going to reuse anything. Same thing with the pistons. If you need to get replacements, there's the, um, the deal. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. Don't be afraid of your Atomic 4. They can be rebuilt. And um, good luck to you. And uh, happy sailing. The Atomic 4 lives on.